to scan synthesis. So, in the scan synthesis the one stage of it is scan configuration. So, in that process so, while mixing this negative edge and positive edge signals uh, uh, positive edge scan cells in a scan chain, because uh, the circuit. So, it is comp it is having a negative edge, edge scan cell followed by a positive edge scan cell. So, this is the uh, circuit structure. So, we have to it has to be connected like this, because after this negative edge has come. So, this uh, value will be set to some proper value and then in the positive edge the value uh, will can be sensed by the next scan cell. So, they need to be grouped like this. So, the way it operates is that, so this is the scan clock that is running and this is the x input, this is the, uh, this is the uh, s i and this is the x and then we have got y. So, suppose this when this clock is going low at the negative edge, the value is put on to this x line, then when this clock was going high, so this d 1 value comes to this one. Similarly, uh, this x gets the value d 2 when this line is this clock is uh, going low at this point and when this clock is going high the next flip flop gets the value of d 2. So, why you will take uh, take on the first x at the rising clock edge before x is loaded with the s i value at the falling clock edge. So, that will happen, but if we do just the reverse if we put that positive edge uh, scan cell before the negative edge scan cell in that case. Uh, both scan cells will uh, always incorrectly contain the same value at the end of each shift clock cycle. So, what we say is that suppose we just do the reverse that is we have got this one is positive edge triggered and this is negative edge triggered. So, what will happen when the s i value is given when the positive edge comes the value will be loaded here and in the negative edge that value will be loaded here, but this flip flop will continue uh, till uh, still continue with the previous value. So, for some point of time both the flip flops will have the same value. So, uh, what is happening is that the whatever value you put onto this d flip flop, so in onto this s i line, so it will get loaded onto both the flip flops. So, whenever I have got two types of uh, uh, flip flops uh, getting mixed uh, 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 negative edge triggered and positive edge triggered, the design uh, synthesis should always do like this that the negative edge triggered uh, flip flop should be put first and then the positive edge triggered flip flop, otherwise there will be problem. Then comes, uh, then, then uh, if there are two different clock domains like, so this is the domain 1 and this is domain 2. So, in between we need to put a lockup latch. So, it a lockup latch will be inserted between adjacent cross clock domain scan cells in order to guarantee that any clock skew between the clocks can be tolerated. So, if there is a uh, say clock 1 is driving this uh, clock domain and clock 2 is driving this clock domain. So, it may so happen that uh, um, uh, there is a skew. So, over the time the, uh, um, the difference between clock 1 and clock 2 uh, the time difference it changes. So, if it change then what we can do? So, this uh, the value uh, may be before it has uh, been sampled by this uh, um, clock domain 2 flip flop. So, it is uh, this clock domain 1 is going to modify it. So, what is done? when this clock is low. So, this uh, lockup latch will hold the value and it uh, when this clock becomes high. So, then this will remember the previous value. So, this lockup latch will be inserted in between whenever we have got this type of cross clock domain structure. So, in the some uh, earlier example we have seen that there may be data transfer between uh, um, uh, clock domains. So, whenever we have that thing. So, this uh, scan synthesis process it must introduce this type of lockup latches between the domains. So, here is that uh, uh, lockup latch uh, sort of thing like say clock 1 is this one. So, clock 2 is this one. So, uh, during each shift clock cycle x will first take on the value of s i whatever is there at the rising edge of rising c k 1 edge then z will take on y okay, uh, at the rising c k 2 edge. So, that is that is going to happen and y in between this y signal in between it will hold the value for uh, z to sample. Okay. So, this is so you see that x has changed to the value d 2, but uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, if this uh, y was not there if this y was not there then this z will get a wrong value. If y was not there this latch was not there then z will get a wrong value 
because it has uh, uh, because of this uh, clock edge skew. Okay. So, that has to be taken care of. Then at the RTL level at the register transfer level also, so we can uh, do something to enhance this testability. So, why RTL uh, the RTL designs are needed like so the actually what is happening is that if we are talking at the gate level then the number of gates in the design is increasing significantly as the designs are becoming more and more complex. So, number of gates are becoming uh, 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 increasingly high. So, there is a typical uh, tremendous growth in the number of devices then the timing becomes a problem. So, we have we do not have uh, much uh, time to put the product into market. So, in the, in the introductory classes we have seen that the time to market is an important parameter. So, that has to be uh, controlled. So, if we are going to test at always at the uh, gate level then uh, we have to uh, we have to do much more testing compared to a high higher level testing like at the RTL level. And there is a potential of yield loss, potential of yield loss like if I do not do RTL level testing then uh, uh, we will have uh, something like this that uh, some tests may get uh, bypassed and uh, at, the, uh, at the device level when you are doing so some functionalities might not have been tested thoroughly. So, that way there may be some potential yield loss. Then low power issues like at the RTL level, so we know that we can uh, um, so if the circuit is very big and we try to test the whole thing together, so entire part of the circuit will be getting power as a result there will be lot of power consumption, but for a particular test pattern it may be targeted to test a fault in a particular region of the circuit. So, it may be sufficient to excite only that region. So, give power only to that region, but this type of demarcation may be difficult to do when we have got a gate level circuit. So, when we have got a RTL level circuit, so since we know that okay, we have got this adder, multiplier, multiplexer, uh, this is um, some uh, decoder like that. So, we can target each of them separately as a result uh, we may be uh, having better uh, uh, power reduction. Then row uh, core reusability, so this is another very interesting issue because uh, now uh, most of the systems that we are designing, so they are based on this reuse principle. So, core are basically some pre designed pre verified modules, so that are going to be integrated into the system. So, uh, if we have got this course, then we know that for app, uh, uh, for testing a particular core, the core provider will pro give us the test vectors directly. So, what is needed is just to apply those test vectors to that uh, core and get the responses and uh, uh, check them. So, because of this increased reusability, so we do not need to do test generation for this individual cores. So, as we are uh, using this core based design, so um, our effort may be less from this point of sight because we have just have to apply the given test pattern. So, test generation is not necessary. Of course, application may become a problem, we will see that later, but generation part at least is uh, spared. Then time to market pressure. So, the overall time uh, that we have in our hand is less. So, uh, if we test at the RTL level, so maybe we are testing in terms of functionalities. So, if we are testing in terms of functionalities, so functions which are very much important, so maybe we do we test those functions thoroughly, functions which are not that much important, maybe we just uh, uh, we do not do a 100 percent testing of that. So, as a result the time to market will reduce and uh, that will help us in getting better return from the product. So, design flow at uh, at RTL and gate level. So, in a gate level testability repair design flow will be like this. So, it will take the RTL design, it will go through a logic synthesis stage, after logic synthesis we will get the gate level design. On that gate level design, so there will be testability repairs that all those uh, scan rules are there. So, the, the all those repairs will take place. So, this process will uh, go on. So, once we are through we know that my design is uh, test uh, it, it has been uh, all the rules are uh, all the rules are being followed then we get a testable design on this testable design we do a logic scan synthesis that will insert the scan chains and all that and then thus we get the scan design on the other hand at the rtl level if we do so start at the rtl design then we do a testability repair so we see whether there is any feedback loop and all that whether 
is a gated clock and all that. So, all those things, but those tests are at the RTL level. So, we get the testable RTL design. After we have got this testable RTL design, we do the logic and scan synthesis. So, that is done and that way we get the scan design. So, testability uh, modules are inserted at the RTL level itself. So, RTL the scan design rule checking. So, the for fast synthesis, so they are mapped onto combinational primitives and high level models. So, we can uh, uh, since we want to uh, do the synthesis process fast. So, we have got pre designed modules. So, we just map the functionalities onto uh, those uh, high level model and also combinational primitives that if previously designed modules are there, we just uh, put it onto that. But there may be uh, testability problems. Uh, so, we are to identify the testability problem, we may, we may have some static uh, solutions that is uh, we just analyze uh, the behavior, we just check the connection between the modules and all that or there may be dynamic solutions. So, there we simulate the system and try to see whether it is creating any problem or not. So, this is uh, one RTL level design. So, it says that uh, at so, at, uh, at uh, this is some sort of Verilog code. So, at the uh, positive edge of clock, if q happens to be all 1, then clock 15 equal to 1, else clock 15 equal to 0 and q equal to q plus 1. So, uh, what is happening is that um, um, and at the edge of, uh, so this way it is actually counting uh, the clock 15 value. So, after 15 clock pulses have been obtained. So, there will be this d will get the start value. So, this is uh, exactly what is happening. So, this clock comes and this uh, clock after the after the, the this is this has become this clock 15 line has become high. So, it will be acting as a clock for this uh, d, d flip flop and accordingly the start value will go to d. Now, the problem is that there is a asynchronous there, there will be uh, some scan problem in this because uh, now uh, this in the test mode what we what we do is that this uh, uh, if this uh, clock uh, clock 15 line is coming here in the test mode so it will be selecting if the test mode is 0 so it will be selecting this clock 15 line from here so it will be going into this uh, d flip flop on the other hand if this uh, uh, if this uh, mode is 1 then this clock goes directly to this one. So, in this case what is happening is that you see that this flip flop when this clock 15 is low clock 15 is not high. So, it is not getting any clock. So, we cannot put it uh, put it into a scan put it onto a scan chain because this will not be uh, this will uh, this clock is different from this clock. So, we what we are doing we are trying to modify it. So, that under in a test mode the clock signal goes to both the flip flops. But in the normal operation mode, of course, uh, this clock 15 will be driving the clock of this flip flop. So, this is modified. So, what is happening at the RTL level itself, uh, the design is modified. So, the we had this as the previously uh, 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 our previous RTL code, and now we have got this as the new RTL code. So, it says that assign clock test equal to. So, there is a condition check if TM signal is low. In that case, so it if T m is high, if T m is high, then it will be assigning clock. So, if T m is high, then clock test is getting clock. If T m is low, then clock test is getting clock 15. So, this correction that we want to be there in the circuit. So, that is that uh, in the behavior in the uh, in the RTL level code, we have uh, that this line can be inserted. So, that is actually the RTL level corrections that is done by the uh, RTL repair tool. Then this RTL scan synthesis, the scan equivalent of each storage element refers to an RTL structure. The scan chains are inserted into the RTL design. So, uh, for every storage the RTL structure will also have storage element. So, all those storage elements will be converted into uh, the, uh, the scan equivalent. So, all the flip flops that are there in the RTL structure, so they will be converted into scan flip flop all the latches will be converted into scan latches. So, like that uh, we will uh, this uh, RTL scan synthesis will convert all the uh, storage elements into the RT into the scan structures. On the other hand, 
this scan chains will get created via this uh, uh, storage elements. Okay. So, this is RTL scan synthesis and there is a pseudo RTL scan synthesis. So, this will specify the pseudo primary inputs and pseudo primary outputs and it can cope with many other DFT structures perform one pass single pass synthesis. So, we will see that. So, what is uh, uh, pseudo we can specify some of the inputs to be pseudo primary inputs and pseudo primary outputs and only for those flip flops or those uh, inputs outputs. So, it will try to uh, put it put them onto a scan. So, it is actually going towards that partial scan. Scan uh, extraction and verification. So, scan extraction it will rely on performing a first synthesis on the RTL scan design and generate a software model for tracing the scan connection. So, again the same thing that is it is uh, trying to uh, at the RTL description level itself. So, it will try to see where are the scan lines or uh, where are the scan chains inserted. So, it is actually uh, um, the lines that have been inserted uh, into the de description. So, corresponding to that what will be the circuit that is synthesized and this scan verification. So, it will uh, rely on generating a flash uh, test bench to simulate the flash test. So, flash test is bas basically checking all the scan chains. So, the scan chains whether they have been uh, fabricated correctly or not. So, that is uh, tested by this uh, flash pattern. So, this flash test bench will be generated and uh, to see whether this uh, um, this will be this is correct or not. That this can be used for both RTL and gate level designs because the, this is the, the, the scan chains are actually test. Then this uh, then we apply the broadside load test for verifying the scan capture operation. So, broadside load test is uh, applying the test pattern and seeing whether it is uh, getting the value properly or not. We will come back to this when we go to the detailed testing uh, this beast testing and all that. So, for scan capture operation of the RTL this can be applied. So, DFT has become one of the vital uh, tool for ensuring product quality. Scan design is the most widely used DFT technique because that is uh, now more or less accepted that we have um, uh, this scan chains are to be inserted. So, all these CAD tools that we have, so they are now supporting this uh, DFT insertion technique. New design and test challenges that are coming up for this DFT design for reducing test power consumption, then this test data volume and test application time. So, what is happening is that uh, as the circuit is becoming more complex, so we have got this test data volume also increasing significantly. So, storing all those test data onto ATE is a challenge. So, that way we can uh, uh, we can try to uh, do something by means of something known as test compression and all that. So, that this uh, data volume is uh, less and application time also needs to be reduced. So, application time can be reduced by uh, uh, using uh, many other techniques like one is definitely reducing the number of test patterns. Another is uh, the, so, uh, by transferring the test patterns uh, faster from ATE to the device. So, that way and of course, we need to cope with physical failures of the nanometer design era. So, more types of failures are occurring in the nanometer domain nanometer era. So, those fall those defects are to be covered by the fault models and accordingly we have to uh, come up with some DFT for those types of faults. Thank you.